Hey everyone, welcome to the live stream. We got a good broadcast plan for today. We're going to be talking about gear. We're going to be talking about trips that I've been on, plans for the future. I have a bunch of great questions that have come in from Instagram. And then as well, I'm sure we're going to get to a bunch of great questions from people in the live stream as well. So queue up your questions in your minds because I'll let you know when we're going to get into question period um, from, from the live chat. But let's uh let's just say hi. Say hi to everyone. Tell say, say hi in the chat. Let me know where you're from. Looking forward to to spend some time with everyone on this beautiful Sunday Sunday evening. Evan Hammond, I cannot promise that there'll be no poop talk. <laughs> there's no questions about poop, so there's nothing to trigger me to talk about poop other than you saying no poop talk. That's now now that's got me talking about poop. <laughs> we got we do have some great questions from from people who got some gear questions about um, different gear that I use, some thoughts on some new gear. Uh, I'm gonna share some thoughts on some gear that's coming down the pipe. I just got a new sleeping pad from a company and a new ultralight chair. So in 20 this uh, in the next year, there's gonna be a chair that's gonna compete with the. Um, Helinox Chair Zero in the ultralight realm, other than just the REI Flex Light Air. So there's going to be three chairs in the ultralight world now, which is going to be really cool. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of cool stuff that's that's coming down the pipe, and I've been testing some of it out ahead of ahead of release, so that's that's always fun. Got a bunch of people here from all over the world. We got Evan from Rocky Mountain House, Joshua from Southwest Michigan, Quebec City, Lethbridge, Whistler, Pennsylvania. Every, everyone from all over the place we've got Oz go get them outdoors 42 people in the in the that are viewing right now that's pretty that's pretty good drop drop some likes if you're excited for the live stream I think that helps get people get people in here uh, let's uh, yeah let's 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 jump into some warm-up questions that came in from Instagram uh, because there's there's just some quick ones that we can run through mr. McKinnon asked the best no cook lunch on trail as well as whether I stop for lunch to eat or if I eat while I walk. So I, I usually eat while I walk. I don't usually stop for lunches. Sometimes I'll stop and just kind of sit down while I eat um, what I have for lunch. But most of the time I'm just kind of snacking and then I'll have you some sort of bigger, higher calorie lunch type snack. So lately I've been using Pro Bars, which have 370 calories, a bunch of different flavors. Another option that is great um, are what, what are like green belly meals. So those are those are some things I usually do. Just yeah, no no cook lunches. Um, sometimes I'll bring some cheese and bread and uh, and and some like meats or something like that. But that's, that's for that. TMD Greer asks, Have you heard about Gear Trade in Okotoks? I have. I've talked with Jesse from Gear Trade, a uh, great company. Sell a lot of ultralight and cottage brand stuff up here in Canada. So if you're in Canada, go definitely go check them out. Salicious Phillips asks, any thoughts on the Seek Outside Sunlight 2? So I, I'd never even heard about it. Um, so I went went and checked it out. Looks like a pretty standard two trekking pole ultralight tent. Looks like it's single walled. So that, that's cool. I, I haven't really, yeah, I don't really know much about it. It looks like it's, uh, yeah, standard. I don't, I don't even see any specs on their website here. 39 ounces. I don't know what what's 39 ounces in grams, everybody. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure. Let's see. 39 ounce to grams. I do this all the time as I'm typing into Google converting. So 11 1100 uh, grams, which isn't super light for a for a single wall tent, I don't think. But I, I noticed that they're using rainbow doors. Um, sorry, I went to the wrong uh, the wrong the wrong thing there. I noticed they're using rainbow doors and I've, I saw something really cool from 3FUL, which I'm excited about. It's a new technology, not technology, just a new way of doors being implemented. So they have a center zip and then two bottom zips. So it's kind of is a, I, I've seen this on other tents where, but they only have like one side. So you have um, the center zip and then one, one zipper going in one direction. So Big Agnes does this same with um, MSR, but I love the idea of having it on both sides. And it just kind of creates this really big opening you can get in from either side. I'd love for like Seek Outside or, or someone like Z-Pax to start utilizing this technology because I think it's 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 great. Another question from Devin John. Do you think the c to Summit X Mug Cool Grip is big enough for oatmeal? Depends on how hungry you are. If you're really hungry, probably not. But if you're if you're looking for about 300, 400 calories, it's probably enough. CB Farrar, what mount do you use on your trekking poles? Um, go check out. 
a video that I did on all of the gear that I use for filming. Um, I think it was, it was a live stream as well. Everything I use is, is in that video. Texano, Texano Mitch, your GDT was great. Just a comment. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, I appreciate that. That was a, that was a fun trip. Um, and yeah, I've been, I actually was out on a trail recently. Maybe we can do a little bit of some trip recap. Um, on Thursday and Friday of this past week, I fast packed the Rockwall Trail, which a lot of people do in four days. Um, I did it, tried to do it in, in two days and I ran into some GD tiers on, on that trail. They're, they're hiking in the opposite direction of me. I was going southbound, they're heading northbound. So I got to, to chat with them a little bit, talk about how their trip is going and kind of live, live a little vicariously with them. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Welcome everyone who's kind of joining in right now. We're going to be talking about gear, trips, plans for the future, answering questions from Instagram as well as the live chat. Um, if you guys have any chat questions in the live chat, in the chat right now, um, put, put question in big, big all caps and then type in your question just so I can uh, identify it and then we'll, we'll answer a any questions that you guys have. You can start dropping questions in right now. Put questions in in all caps and then your question afterwards so um, looking forward to chatting with everybody frederick ernst with a super chat really appreciate it frederick love that um that's awesome and a, and a bunch of channel members in here we got darren and evan and joshua and michael so really appreciate all the channel members who are who are showing up it's uh it's always a blast to have you guys have you guys in here so yeah, drop some questions into the chat. In the meantime, Slam YYC on Instagram asked, "What offline maps app do you use?" And I've mentioned it before, but I use Guide GPS not because it's necessarily the best app. There's a lot of other good ones out there, but because it has features that fit with my use cases the best. And I also have all my trails on here already, as you as you can see. Um, but basically, I like that it it's really kind of quick to zoom in and out, and it's really easy to to make a trail that snaps to their existing trail network system. So I, I use that all the time. Um, CalTopo I found just doesn't scale in and out very quickly. So if I'm zooming in and moving around, it doesn't work super well. And then FatMap, it was just a little bit more tedious to make custom trails. So that was that I use Guide GPS, and then it, it syncs really well with my phone, and then I can export maps and trails from my phone to my Garmin watch. And then I use my Garmin watch in order to navigate when I'm out on trail. So guide GPS is what I use. <laughs> uh, you got a question here from unlikely hiker outside of the Canadian Rockies. What is your favorite place to hike? Arizona for sure. Um, there's something magical about the desert and especially the desert kind of just outside of Phoenix and the superstitions. Um, I could, I could go out there and just kind of hang out forever. It, it's considering how close it is to Phoenix. The soups are surprisingly, not super busy and it's just phenomenal out there like it's people say that it's nothing special from like a view standpoint or anything like that but just the vibe is is really cool and i highly recommend going and checking it out and if you're in some place cold like i am in up here in canada then heading down to arizona is a nice way to kind of break up the winter as well if you're if you're able to zesma have you had the chance to use the durst and kakwa pack yet hearing some great things i haven't um Packs, packs are tough. I find packs to be something that is very individual um, in, in, in light of like what people want, what they need, what fits them. Um, so I, I know people who love some packs that I personally don't like. And then I like some packs that other people don't like and it doesn't really fit with their systems. Um, so I, I, I don't take a look at as many packs um, as other things. Like I, I really like looking at sleeping pads primarily and then tents because um it's just really I, I find those are a little bit less subjective i guess so we got another question thanks for the questions guys really appreciate it um, we got another question from instagram norman blaze how do you deal with big weather fluctuations so he kind of gave the example of it goes from like 100 degrees 30 degree 100 degree fahrenheit 30 degrees celsius um during the day and then drops down to like below freezing or something at night or even just above freezing. Um, I just bring layers and, <laughs> and just make sure I'm watching the weather. I, I find that the heat isn't as difficult to deal with necessarily from layers. So you can only get, you can only take off so many layers um, with heat. And then it's just after that, it's just kind of acclimatizing to it. But um, 
the cold, you have to just have enough layers in order to stay warm. That's that's about it. Evan Hammond asked, when are we going fishing in the Alpine? Uh, I, I don't have any fishing gear. I don't know how I don't know how to fish in the mountains. I grew up out in Ontario, eastern Canada, in Lake Country, um, and we just we just use lures and, and kind of ca- do some casting with uh, reels. And yeah, it was a lot different out here. There's a lot more fly fishing and stuff like that. So it's, uh, yeah, a little, a little bit different having gotten, gotten out fishing in the mountains here. Hey, recent from Vancouver. Welcome to the, welcome to the live, live stream. Harry Mold in the chat. What hike would you do if you could only hike one for the rest of your life? Ooh, good question. Is there a limit on how long the hike is? Because you ha- you have the, um, I, f- I forget the, the, there's like a something that connects the PCT with the CDT with the Arizona Trail and the the trail that goes kind of along the Canadian US border. That's uh like there just be tons of you I could spend the next probably 10 years hike hiking that and and not um overlap on a spot. Um so that, that something like that maybe and if but I've had to pick like a like a shorter trail then prob- probably one of the probably I, don't, I have no idea maybe one of the loops in arizona just because of that vibe aspect it's not really relying on views or anything like that yeah so that's that's a, that's a hard question that's a, it's a good question <laughs> uh joshua asked have you ever thought about doing a video about long-term storage for your like tents pads sleeping pads water filters um i i think it's everyone's situation is different for storage so i i've thought about it i've thought about it for sure so to answer your question i have but um it's it's one of those tough videos to make because some people some people have a lot of gear they need to store some people don't and my gear situation is probably a lot different than a lot of people out there so it's <laughs> it's uh my storage situation is 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 evolving i have a storage locker where i keep a lot of gear because i just don't have space in my office here we got we got 57 people in the in the in the live chat in the live stream right now so thanks thanks everyone for for stopping by we're several minutes in now and we're just kind of covering some questions from instagram as well as uh the the chat here with about gear plans trips everything like that as we kind of go through I'll, i'll talk about different different things um Joshua, we answered that question. Heather asked, I don't know if you said this or not, but do you like Gaia or Onyx better? So I already already mentioned um, that I use I use Gaia. We went through that at the beginning of the podcast here, and uh, I've tried using Onyx. It just doesn't work super well for me. Yeah, too tall, Greg. Superstitions are 110 Fahrenheit right now. No fun. Yeah, that's uh, that's 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 hot. That's that's warm temperature. <laughs> Matt Jones on Instagram asks ultralight pants versus sh- versus shorts. So I usually use pants when I'm backpacking because I like to protect my legs from the sun, bugs, sticks, whole bunch of different stuff. Even when it's really hot out, if I'm just hiking, I'll wear pants. But if I'm doing like some fast packing or trail running, then I'll wear shorts just to keep my legs a little bit cooler. Christopher Kirchin, what stakes do you use for your X mid? So I use the um, the MSR Groundhog stakes great great stakes they're they're robust they they hold well just awesome awesome stakes evan i am not telling you where the the storage locker is (laughs) i yeah i should probably add another lock to that storage locker because it's uh it's got a lot of stuff in it a lot of a lot of gear a lot of tents right now so i let's let's go over some so some trips um that I've been on recently, just kind of recap. If you guys follow the channel, you're, you've been you've been kind of aware on them, aware of them. I went to Outdoor Retailer um, in Utah, and I went on a trip with Outdoor Vitals for three days. At, before that, before Outdoor Retailer, and I got to use a whole bunch of Outdoor Vitals gear, which I've never used before. That was a lot of fun. It was kind of interesting because I was going through my first impressions and doing kind of mini reviews of the gear with tasting and bring them from outdoor vitals kind of right in front of them and it was fun because i got to give them feedback they got to talk to me about like their design considerations and philosophies around the different pieces of gear so that it was it was a really neat experience i'm, I'm glad that the first time that i got experience outdoor vitals gear was with them and i tested out the cs40 pack which is their new pack and really kind of that 
the pack and the oblivion sleeping pad are two items that i was very surprised by um just the pack has a lot of attention to detail it's just a solid solid pack in 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 uh in general and i think a really good option for a lot of people and then the sleeping pad at, at just over a hundred dollars us is a phenomenal buy it's it was it's it's warmer i think than the r value rating gives it credit for especially with a quilt and then it's relatively comfortable probably on par with the nemo tensor it's not super light but it's very it's relatively affordable which is which is great we need more affordable options um, for sleeping pads in there and then i was at outdoor retailer looking at a bunch of new gear coming out and made a couple of videos on that and then after that uh steven with my life outdoors and i did a three-day trip in the uintas outside of salt lake city and that was that was a really fun trip steven's a great guy we get along really well so hopefully we can do some more some more trips in the future Evan asked, is the beard as unreal in real life? I think you're referring to Tayson. It's 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 a phenomenal beard. It's uh it's a good one. And both both those guys are are really, really nice. Um we have a after that after that, I guess I've I've had a a couple more trips. Um the most recent one was a fast packing trip on Rockwall where um I did it in two days, tested out a bunch of new kind of not new gear, but gear that I haven't used in that kind of situation where I'm running and hiking as fast as i can managed to cover um, about 60 kilometers in a total of um like 10 10 ish hours or so so that was that was a neat experience my body's still recovering from that a bit but uh, there'll be a video of that, of that coming out in like a week and a half and then the outdoor vitals trip video is coming out on friday of this week so looking forward to that if you guys have questions, drop them in. I got some more from Instagram here, but we're going to answer questions from, from the chat as well. And we're talking about gear. We've answered a bunch of questions already, but we're talking about, so if you missed some, go back, rewatch the beginning of the, of the live stream, we're talking about gear plans and trips that I've been on. Um, Zesma asked the question in the chat, what is your favorite gearhead YouTuber? Probably Steven, Steven from my life outdoors. Um, he, he, he just, he just is very diligent with his testing and is very, very honest guy. Uh, Devin with backcountry exposure is, is also awesome. Um, I, I watch a lot of gear skeptic stuff as well. He, he gets a little bit more in depth, um, on like one topic and sometimes it can be a little, a little slow moving, a little dry, but a lot of good info in there as well. So those three, those three always have good, good info. Rick and Wild asked um, about anxiety on through hikes and how I managed. I'm guessing with regards to my Great Divide Trail through hike, that because that's the only through hike that I've that I've done. Uh, and I I think it depends on what you mean by anxiety with through, with the hikes because I don't necessarily have anxiety related specifically to the hiking aspect. I'm I'm pretty confident in my abilities from a hiking perspective i think as as with most things anxiety start to creep in when there's a lot of unknown variables or things that are out of your control and i'm i'm able to manage that pretty pretty well like bears i still have a little bit of trauma with bears after getting charged by a grizzly bear while on the great divide trail uh when i was out by myself this this past um this, this past week on on rock wall it's it's a high density bear area so I was a little bit nervous and wary while I was out there by myself. I was at a campsite where there was no one else. Um, so that just, yeah, a little, a little bit, a little bit of fear, I guess, around that. And I th I'd say, yeah, I, I think, I think it's just with anxiety, a lot of it is just always managing what you can control and then not worrying about what, what you can't control. So I, I just, that's the mindset that I try to have. Got some more questions from the chat. Let's, let's run, let's run through them here. <laughs> uh, Zesma. Who's your, oh, I already, already answered that question. That guy, question. Other than the crazy winter pad from Nemo, are there going to be other sleeping pads released that we'd love, that are coming out, um, especially with winter? Uh, sorry, I, I let me just answer that question. I read it terribly. Um, so Nemo is also going to be releasing an update to their all season pad, which is kind of their Nemo insulated right now, uh, which has an R value of like, in the fours right now it's going to be bumped up i think into the fives so they're going to be updating that and they're going to have a lighter version that's like a 2.8 r value um that's more for like kind of summer summer season so they're gonna they're gonna have three three pads in their tensor line the 
the summer version, kind of all season version, and then the extreme version. So that's, yeah, if you have a question, just drop, make, make it all caps question, and then ask your question just so I can, I can identify it. Um, we have another question for the chat people. We have a bunch of questions from Instagram that I'm, that I'm getting to here as well. Trade to DAC. What countries have you traveled to and what is on your bucket list? So that's an interesting question because I've, I've traveled to a lot of, a lot of countries. Most of them, it was before I was one years old. So I was born in the Philippines and then my parents traveled around Asia up through Ru communist Russia and then into Europe um, before, before I was, like one and a half, two years old. So I, was, I, I think I visited like 18 qu countries before I turned two. And then since then, it's been another like 15 countries or, or so. Um, on my bucket list is is some South America spots, like down in uh, Chile, Peru, Argentina, getting down into that area. I'd love to go to New Zealand as well. I think that'd be a ton of fun. Um, yeah, a lot of international... I've been to Italy, but... I'd love to go to like Northern Italy and into the Dolomites a little bit. Spain, um, I've been to Spain and loved Spain. I'd love to get back there. The food in Spain is phenomenal. Backpackerish, who has a great YouTube channel. Definitely go check him out. He's another Calgary guy, but I, I he, he makes great content. Super great personality, really nice seeming guy. We've chatted a little bit on uh, offline, but it's, yeah, go check him out, Backpackerish. He asked, which section of the GDT was your favorite and why? So for the Great Divide Trail, my favorite section, that's another tough question. Probably probably the last section because it had a, at that point, I was feeling very confident in my legs um, and it was very beautiful, good challenges. And I think I just was in a very good mental state at that point and able to just kind of cruise and, and have a lot of fun. But it was also challenging and remote at the same time. So the last section, section G, was was really cool. Otherwise, maybe maybe section A. Section A was just yeah. It was kind of getting in, getting the trail going, and there's some really good ridge walks and challenges on there as well, and just getting everything everything going. So we, so Sean, in the chat, asked, ever consider the Appalachian Trail? Yeah, I've I've, cons I've considered all of the all of the big U.S. through hikes, the Appalachian Trail, PCT, CDT. To be honest, um, it four to six months is just a very long time to take off take off from life, because yeah, I, I have a I have a great life, great great wife, um, Ste Steffi Poo, and and my dog Pippin is is in the other room there, probably probably listening in. But yeah, I'd I'd, I'd miss them a lot if I was if I was away from them for for four to six months and um like Steph has a job and stuff like that so yeah I none of the big trails are in my near future that's for sure but I think it'd be an interesting challenge but I don't think the, th the thing after the GDT like I feel pretty good about like getting a, a through hiking experience with those longer trails the impression that I get is that a lot of it is just like just mental challenge like you're not challenging yourself as like a backpacker necessarily like the the hiking and the backpacking is pretty standard day after day it's the mental aspect of just being out on trail and i love being out on trail but for probably different reasons than people love through hiking potentially good question though i get it. i get it a lot dusty old hat what happened to the pink spoon you had a different spoon in your last video with steven yeah the pink the pink spoon is still i i used it on my last couple trips but not on that trip with Steven Part, partly because um, I just had, they're all dirty. Cause I use, I use it. I have like four of them and I just rotate them through and uh, yeah, they're all dirty. So I grabbed the tokes. I should have brought the pink spoon as well because Steven, you won't see, you didn't see in the video, but Steven forgot his spoon and was whittling. I should post this as a Instagram story or something. He was whittling a stick into a spoon and then he ate with this stick and I've been there. I've done that. I forgot a spoon and I've had to use a stick for a spoon. And I found a really good one when it happened to me. So I, I told Steven, like from experience, don't throw out your stick. And that's a pro tip. If you have to use a stick as a spoon and you're on a multi-day trip, save that stick because you're going to need it at the next spot. And it's hard to find a good stick spoon sometimes. That's a uh, dusty old hat. Yeah. Cushy AT and cushy PCT. I, got... <laughs> I, I know, um, I made, I made a kind of tongue in cheek comment in the video with Steven about 
the PCT and AT being cushy. And yeah, it, it's, it's all, it's all relative. There's, there's definitely some challenging parts. Every year is going to be different. Um, I think there's, there's always gonna be challenging parts of, of all, all trails, all the trails out there, but yeah, I, I think for the most part, um, I, I, I do kind of consider some of those trails to be a little bit cushy because they see so much traffic. They're very well maintained, easy to follow. Um, like if you encounter a crazy snow year or something like that, or you're trying to push the miles then then it definitely makes it a lot more difficult. But yeah, that's, I think that's kind of every trail. You can make it as hard or as easy as, as you want. Zesma, breathable or non-breathable rain gear? I've given up on breathables and I've been using anti-gravity gear rain jacket. Yeah, I think breathe breathability is kind of, doesn't really exist. So I just go with whatever is light and like very light and it's going to keep me dry and it's durable. I don't really worry about breathability that much. That being said, like the Z-Pax Virtus rain jacket that I have um, and a couple of other ones that I'm testing out the Outdoor Vitals, Tusher, and then one from Decathlon, they're like fairly breathable until they're covered in water and then they don't breathe as well. So I, I don't really worry about breathability as much for that. I worry more about breathability in wintertime when I want to be like venting heat a lot quicker and then breathability and air permeability are, are big factors for me. So we got a question from Raylene Grant on Instagram, where to next? Good question. There's a bunch of stuff coming up. What's really exciting that's going to be happening next week. So in like four days is I'm heading on a four day trip on a section of the Great Divide Trail with eight guys, which I've, I've never done before. That's going to be the most amount of people that I've ever gone on a trip with. But Jesse from Backcountry Forward is going to be there. And then Carl from the Backpacking and Blisters podcast. And then a bunch of a bunch of other guys. We're going to be doing um, a, a three three night trip through the Canadian Rockies it's gonna be a lot of fun really interesting I'm, I'm anticipating a little bit of a gong show I'll probably um be trying to do like a like a bingo card of like someone forgot something someone like pranks someone else just things like that something breaks uh with that many people there's gonna be a lot of things that that could go wrong so we'll be uh keeping track of that and then I'm also going to be for the I'm gonna be trying to get up to an 11 thousand foot mountain at some point in august as well uh i've never been up on any of the eleven thousand foot hikes in the canyon rockies i know that doesn't sound like super high for a lot of people but in the canyon rockies you get above eleven thousand feet and you get you're getting into some of the more extreme mountains here um and there's only a handful that you can really climb without like needing to rope up or like do glacier travel and stuff like that so i'm gonna be trying one of those and then I have another trip with my parents and then Steph's parents. So last year we went on an awesome trip on Skyline Trail where we brought Steph's pair of parents and my pair of parents and had a lot of fun. We're going to be doing another another parents trip this year, which I, I, I'm trying to figure out what you guys let me know in the chat. Maybe um, I'm trying to figure out whether whether I want to try and make my parents go ultralight or not. I think that could be interesting having them having them use a like a, the Durston X-Mid Pro 2 tent or something like that, and then some ultralight gear, but I don't want them to be uncomfortable either. So it's going to be a fine balance to get them to that like 10-pound base weight without being uncomfortable. But I, I think I think, I think they'd be up for it, especially splitting gear. So we might try to try to do that. Let me know in the, in the chat if you guys have any other ideas on how uh, we can make this a little bit interesting for my parents. And then, yeah, a lot of winter stuff coming up as well. We got Lloyd in the chat from Garage Grown Gear. Hey, Lloyd. <laughs> um frederick asked have you still have you still transitioned to the flat sole rise shoes i'm starting to start i'm just starting and liking the feels for i'm not sure what you mean um i use minimal shoes kind of in my everyday life like walking around town going to the grocery store uh, i use like lems well, mostly lems and zero shoes for that and then i'll use a more cushioned shoe when i'm actually hiking because i i need I need that my foot's not strong enough to, to support um, hiking for like 20 miles straight. Um, so I need I need that bit of more support. But the using the minimal shoe in everyday life trains my foot to be stronger while I'm out on trail. Dusty old hat. What is your experience with fishing or hunting? 
Um, I'm not really much of a fisher or a hunter. Uh, I'll probably never be a hunter fishing. Just I, I don't like staying still in one spot with with the fish with fishing like that aspect of it. So I'll probably I like I like hiking. I like moving fast. Like the one of the thing one of the questions that I asked um, I was asking myself and kind of in the in the video that I shot was on the Rockwell Trail fast packing it was whether fast packing is like is is a suffer fest or a or a fun way to kind of cover a lot of ground and and see a lot of things so um i i do like that aspect of of moving fast in the mountains is covering ground and seeing things but it's it's also a suffer fest fast packing was was really tough <laughs> unlikely hiker yeah yeah like get you well being ultralight is as you get older it's it's i, I do like it so um, I got another question here from Zach Rust on Instagram. This was, this was a good question. It was, this was, this is kind of getting beyond kind of the plans and the gear and everything. It's getting into more like existential stuff. What, and he asked, what is, he asked is if being a full-time YouTuber is sustainable and if I'll, if I'll ever go back to doing what I did before. And I think, I think, I think it's sustainable. Um, I don't really see it stopping anytime soon for me. I know people who have, who have made YouTube their, like their full-time job and gone through to retirement. And I do have that. I do have that kind of as part of my plans, like being able to retire at some point. So I'm not just kind of doing this and just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I do look at it as a, as a career, like the best career I've job I've ever had. It's, it's amazing. Phenomenal. I love being able to chat with you guys and go out and, and hike and test gear and all the people I meet and things I get to do. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. And, uh, I'm going to keep doing it as long as I, as I can, because I, as I love, because I love it. And if I stop, stop loving it, then I'll, I'll transition to something else. Um, I don't think I'll probably ever go back to what I did before, partly because it's, I really like being my own boss. Um, that's, that's just been, that's been a really nice aspect of, of the YouTube thing. So I'd probably just transition into other, uh, other, other aspects of, of, of either like YouTube or, or the outdoor industry or entrepreneurship or, or something like that. So, um, yeah, they, there, there'd be, there'd be something, um, going on there. And I think something I forgot, forgot to mention, um, I, I, I got a lot of questions from people about, different pieces of gear that I've addressed in, um, in, in videos in the past, but I, I mentioned in a live stream before where I kind of announced pack packwizard.com, which is a website that I'm working on with, with, uh, another person that is basically, it's, it, it's very similar to lighter pack, but kind of goes beyond it. And if you're ever interested in what gear I bring on different trips, then you can go check out lighterpack.com slash user slash Justin outdoors. I'll, I'll have a link in the, in the video description, but there you can see this is this is my profile on packwizard.com. You can create your own profile and create your own packs, but it has a lot of the packs that I use on a day-to-day -day basis there, and you can just go check them out. Like if you want to go check out my the fast packing pack that I used on the Rockwall Trail, you can go check that out, and it shows you basically all the gear that I use there. Um, so you can you can take a look at that. There's also packs from other people as well. They're not 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 a ton so far. There's 23 packs. A lot of them are from me. But if you're curious about like this person's AT through hike pack, um, a lot of different options there. I definitely recommend. I don't. Yeah, if, if it'd be it'd be great if 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 you had a trip and um, you're trying to plan it out, then you could go create a pack. And when you're creating the pack, you can make it public through the edit tags button here, and then share with other people so. That, and you can choose like what trail or location. So I could make this like any, any trail I want basically. And then other people can go and search and get inspiration down the road. I think it's a really cool tool. I use it every single day, especially before a trip. Cause you can turn anything into a checklist. So like for the fast packing trip, as I was packing, I just clicked view as checklist. And then I was able to check things off as I went, as I went through and it was so useful. <laughs> I I would have forgotten things. I would have forgotten a spoon or something like that if if I hadn't used uh, this checklist feature. And if you want to, you can export it as like you can print it or something. You can print it if you want or anything like that, and then check things off. So, yeah, if you're ever curious, 
go to go to my profile on packwizard.com link in the show notes and you can see all the different gear that i use got some more questions more questions in the chat here the from aldo is ai ai on your radar if so what influence do you think ai will have in the backcountry world i think i think ai is gonna just slowly change things as everything has it, it like like you, there's people out there who are always like you need to have a map and compass and be able to know how to how to use them i think it's great to be able to know how to use them but i don't think you need to at this point um there's a lot of different options out there that you, you can get around in the backcountry 99 percent of the time without needing to know how to use a map and compass and i think we're going to kind of just as technology moves forward we're just gonna things are just going to kind of slowly evolve but i think the humans have a interesting balance i think of wanting to push the boundaries of things, but then also being scared of change. So there's always this push and pull and it creates a nice middle ground where most people are comfortable with the change that's happening because of that. Colin, uh, the new Nemo pad is going to be the best new best on the market. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I haven't tested them out in the field yet. I have the, ex, the tensor extreme. And my plan in August is to take it up onto a glacier and get it onto some snow and ice and test it out there. See, see how it does. It has an 8.5 R value. So that's uh, very high. <laughs> so it should be plenty warm for, uh, for the for summer conditions, even, even though I will be on ice. But I don't know if it'll be the, the best. I don't think the Tensor right now is the best on the market. Personally, I like the REI Helix the best out of all the pads in the market, that's what works the best for me. If you like a more ultralight pad, then it probably isn't the best for you. Um, and yeah, everyone's gonna, if you want the warmest pad, then it's not gonna be the best for you. But for me, I, I like the REI Helix. Tristan, do you prefer hiking in the Northern Rockies over deserts of the West and Southwest US or do you cherish those rare trips and the lack of grizzlies? I, I think a combination of both. I love I love the Rockies, like getting out here it is also pretty magical and there, it's a great experience. But um, it's, it's, it's more wild. It's more wild and raw and you can just kind of like let, let yourself relax a little bit more. I find the desert, especially in the Arizona area, whereas in the, in the Rockies, I'm always pushing myself and challenging myself more. So I, I like both for different, for different reasons. Dusty old hat, any plans to design gear? Have you gotten your hands on one of Darwin's packs? The Ranger, um, will you be reviewing the outcast jacket? I I think I, I would love to design gear. I, I think it's it's something that I would need to partner with someone, kind of like how Darwin has partnered with a bunch of different people um, to have the gear made. I would I would love to partner with people to design gear, but I'm also willing to just give my ideas for gear to, for free to people. Like if you follow me on Instagram, you saw I posted my dream backpacking pack list like all the features that i'd love to have in a backpack and i just posted that and tagged a bunch of backpack making companies if they want to use those ideas like go for it i'm not going to be bitter about it and that you don't need to attribute anything to me like that's that's fine i just want to i'm i rather the i rather the industry kind of move forward and start incorporating some good ideas and people get good packs in their hands than than worry about kind of like my my ego or anything like that with regards to attribution like if someone wants, if a company wants to work together and just have me give them ideas, then, then we can, we can work on that too. Like there's a bunch of different ways that could happen, but potentially down the road, then I might do something like Darwin where I partner with somebody or have someone manage the, the logistics and manufacturing aspect in, in order to create gear. Cause I have a lot of, um, a lot of ideas, a lot of ideas. <laughs> Frederick got some more questions here. Frederick asked, what's your typical power source set up for backpacking? Uh, you just bring a 10,000 milliamp battery bank and then all my filming gear in a phone. Yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 that's about it. Um, I, I, I get asked a lot about different, like about navigation and stuff on trails. So maybe, maybe I'll run through a quick, uh, quick if you, if you have a question just make sure to write question and then colon that's how i'm kind of picking things out from the chat um otherwise it's a, it's really hard to to pick things out from the chat when there's questions or people are just kind of chit chatting um especially if you if you make it all caps even even easier but for navigation this is uh this is what I, i'm using i use gaia and i create my own routes through here if you're curious about the trip that i'm going on this week it's it's going to be in this area, Saskatchewan crossing area, 
So we're going to be starting up here. I wonder if, let me, let me maybe switch this to satellite view. Cause then, uh, yeah, that, that looks cool. Yeah. So we're going to be heading up down this valley here, up over cataract pass through here and then camping somewhere, somewhere in the cataract Valley before continuing along. This is, this area is beautiful. Probably one of the most beautiful areas in the Canadian Rockies. Then we're going to be heading down to Pinto Lake and camping probably somewhere around here in Pinto Lake, maybe over here. We'll see, see how busy it is. And then we're heading over a bunch more passes. This is another phenomenal area to Michelle Lakes and be camping somewhere around here and then continuing on. So yeah, this, it, I like Gaia cause you can see like, here's, here's the route Pinto Lake via GDT, I think is the road. No, that's not the route that I did. Saskatchewan Crossing. You can see like the elevation profile. And what I really like with Gaia is like you can, you can go along. It shows you that little dot where you are. So you're like, okay, right here, kilometer 12. That's that's the high point. And that's the highest point on the Great Divide Trail as well. So I, I, yeah, Gaia, Gaia is really nice. Ga Gaia, I, I, I think they're outside magazines kind of going in a weird direction. So we'll see what happens with Gaia. Um, but I'd love for another map company to start being better than Gaia because Gaia's kind of stopped support. They, they, don't I, they don't respond to any of my questions by email that I have for them. I just use them because they're the best so far. But hopefully FatMap or Onyx or Natural Atlas or somebody gets as good as, as, uh, as Gaia with regards to the features I need. Because I'd, I'd love to switch away from them. So if, you, if you're out there creating maps stuff, hit, hit me up. Maybe we can, maybe we can chat. <laughs> Question from Gil, Gilberto. Um, what's a good moderate backpacking trail for a weekend trip with good water sources and great views? Depends on depends on where you are, I guess. Um, anything that's within your capabilities. That's a tough question because I don't know where you are, what your capabilities are. It's it's one of one of the things that I actually have troubles with is is planning trips with other people because it's really hard for other people to tell to accurately articulate what their skill level is, what their fitness level is. Um, so it's a lot of time you have to err on the side of caution, but then maybe the person is very fit and has a lot of backpacking experience and aren't kind of overselling it. And you can, you can do some crazier trips. So you always kind of start, I always start out, start out low and then, um, then work my way up as, as I kind of get going into things. Yeah. Planning, planning trips, planning trips is, is tough. It's a lot of work, but um, knowing elevation is a key, especially in the K and Rockies here, knowing elevation is a key, key aspect because like you, you can, you can look at this trail here. Like if, if you're going from South to North, you go from 1400 meters, you gain over a thousand meters of elevation within the first 12 kilometers. That's going to, that's going to kick your butt. Even if you're going down that way, that's going to kick your butt. That's a lot of, that's a lot of work. <laughs> So we're, yeah, we're, if you guys have questions, keep dropping them in. We've gone through all the Instagram questions. The Instagram questions were great. As far as some other gear that I'm testing out, and I'm excited about um, the the Nemo Nemo is coming out with a new ultralight chair, the Moonlight Elite, around the same weight as the Helinox Chair Zero. Really excited about that. Um, the Outdoor Vital stuff that I'm testing out has been really interesting. I, I'm getting a lot of questions about the Osprey Exos Pro. So I do have one of those. I've been testing it. And I've, I've just been trying to find how it is good, like, to, to be honest with you. Um, the first couple of trips I had it out on, it was not performing well for me. It, it was terrible in multiple ways. The hip belt's filled with water. The load lifters loosened consistently. The shoulder straps loosened consistently. Um, the hip belt was loosening. It wasn't carrying weight. It maxed out at like 20, 25 pounds max for weight carrying capabilities, which for how much it weighs was not great. Um, it wasn't super comfortable. The only good thing, it wasn't dur It wasn't like holding up well. It didn't like, so the only good thing about it was the back was very well ventilated. Uh, so I'm, I've been taking it on more trips, trying to find where, how it might be useful for some, cause I know it's a popular pack and I don't want to just write it off. And I emailed Osprey, asked him a bunch of questions and they've kind of just said like, it's, uh, that's how we designed it. And I'm like, okay, well, it, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be hard for me to, to write it, uh, to, to like recommend it to anybody based on those results. Like a lot of the time, even if I don't like something for me, I can kind of see how it might work, might work for someone else. But the Exos Pro, 
I'm probably just going to be writing it off as a pack that no one no one should get. Um, great, Dusty. I like I like Gregory. Gregory makes some good packs. The Focal, especially, get it on sale. It's a great pack that you can try on in store. Carries weight well. Um, has great features. I, I like the the Gregory Focal a lot. Kelty, um, testing out the Kelty. Uh, what's it What's it called? Um, I have it. I have it here. Let me find it. One second. Um, where's my where, what, what's the Kelty pack that I'm testing out? The Glendale 85. So it advertises having a carrying weight of 80, 80 of 70 pounds. So it's an 85 liter pack. Um, I might actually be taking this on, you can see here, this is my gear list for the trip that I was just talking about in Gaia. The Glendale 85 pack. I'll, I'll be probably taking the XMID Pro 2. So I've been testing that out. I'll have some thoughts on that. Probably, I'll probably film some thoughts on this trip. And then the Oblivion sleeping pad from Outdoor Vitals as well. I haven't, I haven't figured out everything that I'm bringing, I'm bringing on this trip, but uh, another, another cool feature like the, that I love about Pack Wizard is I've started adding everything into my gear closet. So you can see here, it has everything in there. And then if you need to add something, so let's say I want to add into electronics like an anchor or a Nightcore power bank. If I just start typing in Nightcore, it has all the items from my gear closet. But then if it's not in my gear closet, like I don't have the NU... 25 the new one in my gear closet it has it in our database we have a pack wizard database and you can just choose a bunch of different items here um, and then add it in there and it fills in the price the weight everything like that you add to your pack and it's super simple super quick um, big fan of that but yeah the glendale 85 70 pound 70 pound carrying weight at five pounds in pack pack weight so we'll see uh we'll see how that goes <laughs> I've also been testing out the the arc hall, um, and I'll have some thoughts on that from from uh, Z packs as well. Uh, counterfeit got a question. Oh wait, got a bunch of questions above that. Sorry, <laughs> I mi I missed them. Uh, Jason, how do you prevent treat foot blisters? Uh, I just use socks that work very well for me, and I don't get blisters, and shoes that fit well. So I use the exo skin toe socks the synthetic version not the merino wool version merino wool holds on to like 10 times as much moisture as nylon so i use the nylon primary not primarily nylon version of the exo skin ankle socks and the toe toe version so that it keeps my toes separate and then i use speed goat fives which fit my foot really well and i i never get blisters so i never need to deal with them um and that's prevention is the best Preventing blisters before they happen is better than treating them. Uh, Dusty, do you like the REI camp chair that's lighter than the Helinox chair zero? Yeah, it's 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 pretty good. Like when I I tested it when it first came out, and it had some weird like design issues that I think were more just like a manufacturing problem that they've since resolved. I've been testing the chair out again like three years later now, and it's it's solid. It's it's a different kind of fit than the chair zero. So some people might like the chair zero more than the REI. Um, what's, what's it called? The flash air, I think REI flex light air. Um, some people might like the flex light air more. Some of them might like the chair zero more. So we'll see counterfeit. Uh, how easy it is for family to track using the Garmin inReach mini Dep pretty easy. If you set up tracking and then your public, uh, portal then they'll they'll be able to they'll be able to track you they'll be able to track you no problem <laughs> uh J joshua can you tell us who all will be on the podcast in the near future i can let me let me pull let me pull it up i have i have a whole planning i'm not going to pull it up like pu like publicly on on my side screen here but i will <laughs> i will pull up uh my planning spreadsheet and let you know who's going to be coming on so coming up we have Johnny with Mayfly Sandals is going to be on the podcast. Really excited. He was an awesome guest. Uh, we, ha we have tomorrow coming up, to coming up tomorrow. We have Carl from the Backpacking Blisters podcast. We talk about a bunch of the trends and gear that we saw at Outdoor Retailer. So that's a really interesting one. If, you're, if you want to hear some more of our thoughts from Outdoor Retailer, then check that one out. And then I have someone from the Leave No Trace um, organization coming on to talk about pooping. So... Sorry, sorry for those who don't like talking about poop, but I get I get asked all the time why can't humans just poop on the ground? And I I can't articulate. I'm not 
very good at articulating why that is. Um, th there's a lot of science behind it. My background is in science and ecology. I have a lot of chemistry background, so I, so I, I know the science behind it, but I can't articulate it well. So I'm bringing someone on to articulate it and talk about the science behind why it's not good for anybody, for people, humans, just to be pooping on the ground and not managing their waste properly. And then um, some, I'm, try, I'm trying to get Challenge, Challenge on, who makes Ultra and Eco Pack material as well as uh someone from mountain equipment company to talk about our values some more some patent stuff a lot a lot of people in the works some search and rescue people um i, I got some 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 irons in the flame wherever the saying is <laughs> but it's at some point it's it's yeah a lot of people <laughs> uh let's let's get some more questions zesma wait no more questions uh, that guy, are you skeptical of the new Comperdell titanium trekking poles? Peaks my interest, but I just don't know about them. Comperdell makes awesome trekking poles. I, I use Comperdell trekking poles day to day as my daily driver, and they're phenomenal. So I, I imagine Comperdell is making some great poles. I don't know if the titanium ones are going to be for me, but for, I'm sure they're going to be for some people. <clears throat> um, they, they have flick locks. Um, they're not twist lock dusty. Uh, Zesma. Is there any new decathlon clothing that you like since your two haul videos? They haven't really released much new stuff. Um, some rain gear, some fast packing stuff. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm debating whether to make a running decathlon running gear video because their running gear is very affordable and very good. I, I use that day to day most of the time. So I might make something about that. Um, yeah, no, but they haven't really been releasing much new decathlon. So I, I might make a decathlon like what some of my favorite gear is this fall, just uh, just for fun. Like I've tested out so much decathlon gear, so it'd be nice just to kind of summarize like my top five or top ten or something like that. I haven't been on backpacker radio. I don't think no. Uh, the Evolve Supply Co Pack is sweet. Yeah, I, a couple people have have mentioned that. Um, it looks very similar to uh, <laughs> the Waymark Evolve. Um, I haven't tested that pack out either, but um, I'd be I'd be down to test out test out either of those. I don't think they're necessarily the packs for me. They're missing some features. I like either a running vest style pack if I'm going to go very ultralight, just for accessibility to things on the shoulder straps. And then I also then I like something with a hip belt that's a little bit more robust if I'm carrying a bit more weight like in winter time or if i'm if i'm on a trip where i'm carrying a lot of comfort items counterfeit the podcast is really good thanks i appreciate that the podcast has been a lot of fun if, if you if you haven't checked it out go check it out it's called the gear priority podcast um with justin outdoors i'll post a link to that in the in the video description to this video as well um because i th how, how many I, let me let me i, I think we're i'm like 15 subscribers away from a thousand so it's like like let's let's get let's get there <laughs> i'll uh i'll put it in right now gear priority gear priority podcast yeah so it should be should be in there um because yeah i think it'd be great to hit a thousand so go go subscribe to the podcast channel <laughs> Yeah, Brian, try a bidet. So for those of you who haven't tried a bidet, you got to get out and try a bidet. And if you're asking a question, put all caps question because it's really hard to identify questions if, it, if you're not putting all caps. If you guys want to keep going, I, I'm down to keep talking about different things, talking about gear, plans, trips. I'm, I'm having a blast on here. So we can we can keep ta talking and um, answering questions and chatting about different things. Like, what, what, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's, keep, let's keep going. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to pick out some questions that, that don't have question in front of it. Uh, Higgler, are you still a fan of the mountain hardware air mesh? Uh, how do you like it compared to alpha direct? Yeah, the air mesh is great. I use it more as like a spring, fall, winter piece because it's just so warm. Um, and it's nice and durable too. So you can, I can wear it on the outside. That's the difference. I think for me with compared to Al alpha direct, I like alpha direct more as like a static like sleep layer or camp layer. And then if I get cold, then I can throw like a wind protect wind jacket on it or something like that. I'm not going to necessarily be hiking in alpha direct, um, just cause it does snag very easily. Um, 
especially compared to, to air mesh. Counterfeit, where do you buy Nightcore stuff in Canada? I buy it mostly on Amazon, or if it's cheaper, uh, I'll buy it from Garage Growing Gear. Um, Cause yeah, it, Amazon, it's, it's sometimes super expensive, which is kind of crazy. Dusty, what do you think the most overrated gear is the most overrated gear on the market? Uh, I'm gonna go with climate climate sleeping pads. They're they're not warm and they're not comfortable. And I think there's pads out there that are in the around a hundred dollars or a little bit less that cover the, both those bases more. And that's all you really that's those are the key features for a sleeping pad. You want something that's warm and comfortable. Um, weight weight factors in there as well, but I don't think it's quite as important. Um, so, so maybe, maybe, maybe that's, uh, I think, Ooh, I, I, I actually have a few different options here. I, I could jet boil as well. Um, I think the jet, I think jet boils are overrated. If you want an all in one can like system like that, I think the MSR wind burner is a better option. It uses rate radiative heat technology and based on my testing, I have both and I've tested them side by side. I wanted to see what the hype is with the jet boil. Um, and I went into it with an open mind, but it just, I just don't I don't get the hype, especially when it's put next to the wind to the wind burner. But after tooting MSR's horn with the wind burner, they also I also think the Hubba Hubba tent is overrated. There's just a lot, I think the Hubba Hubba is kind of living off of its reputation in the past, but I think there's a lot of better options out there now out there now for for tents um, compared to the Hubba Hubba. And you're starting to see it. Like five years ago on trail, I would see at, in the popular camping areas, I'd see like half of the tents would be Hubba Hubbas. I think that's that's much less now. Like when I was going through Rockwall Trail, it's a very popular area. It was probably down to like a fifth were hubba hubbas. So that's yeah, it's definitely switching over. I suck at hiking. Have you checked out the first light clothing on the Meat Eater website? I haven't. Uh, Fre Frederick, have you considered taking a satellite phone? No, um, very heavy. Aaron, I went to try on REI Flash 55 pack. Um, Guide already recommended not loading more than 20 to 25 pounds. I, I feel like he's he's underselling it. Um, I've I've put in like 45 pounds in the REI Flash 55, and if it fits you properly, it's going to carry that weight no problem. Like if you, like you you when you touch one, you can see that it's gonna it's gonna be a pack that carries weight well. It has very like it has a stiff um, back to it, and then very stiff foam that hugs around your hips, and that stiff foam is going to transfer weight very well and then it has like a load lifters that are going to work effectively so you're going to be able to carry like 40 pounds plus easily in a flash 55 and i've tested a lot of packs and the flash 55 is is good as far as weight carrying that's for sure maybe maybe, maybe they say 20 25 pounds just to hedge their bets or so that they don't have a bunch of returns or something i'm not sure that's kind of a weird weird thing for them to say because out of all the like 50 ish 50 to 60 liter packs i've tried it carries the weight the best uh i suck at hiking are you going to check out the motorola gps yes i am checking out i have one the the defy it's it's a sweet little device it's insanely lightweight um it has the same feature as the garmin messenger and the zolio where you can if you're in wi-fi it'll message through wi-fi if you're in cell it'll message through cell and then if you're in neither of those it'll message through satellite um pretty pretty solid app five dollar a month subscription um yeah yeah I, i'm i'm, I'm t currently testing out more from like a reliability standpoint and signal standpoint because those other aspects make it an awesome option as long as it works so that because that's that's what you want you don't you want your sos device to work and you want to be able to send messages um i will take l a less smooth app or something like that or a heavier device if it if it works so it has to it has to check that box before I can give it my seal of approval. So stay tuned for that. It's probably going to be my review of that is probably going to be coming out sometime September October because I don't I don't want to rush that one. Um, you don't want to mess around with SOS devices. Uh, good good question though. <laughs> uh, Michael Crawford super chat thanks thanks buddy really appreciate it. Um, fly out and do the foothills trail with me in North Carolina South Carolina if you're looking to change up the cooler temps you ha normally have. I didn't, I didn't know that North Carolina and South Carolina were good warm or warm areas during the winter. Like, like let me know. Is it January, February kind of time? 
March, that that'd be good to go because I'm always looking for different places to fly to and and hike during uh, January, February, March that are that are warmer. I love the winters in Canada, but I also I also uh, like getting south a little bit. Um, let's pop, jump up to some questions. Matthew, any recommendations for a summer hiking shirt for the U.S. Northeast? So humid. Uh, I like the Astro Man. That's my favorite in all weather conditions it's it's pretty solid um the appalachian gear company um 8020 hoodie is solid maybe a little bit warm for some people but i use it at 100 degrees in the desert and didn't really have any problems so um it's pretty good uh gilberto the water pouch my sweater filter came with keeps popping because the water causing water leak i like the canock water filter it's it's hit or miss like they have some manufacturing defects occasionally where you get pinhole leaks but I've had two pinhole leaks out of like eight different ones. No, yeah. Two pinhole leaks out of eight different bladders and they replaced both of them. So yeah, two, two and then those two have still been going strong. So two out of 10, which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, I know tarp tent doesn't work well with influencers, but they are uh, blank, blank. I suck at hiking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where you're going with that. Yeah. Tarp tent, I've I've heard great things. I've heard so so things. Like they're they're definitely doing interesting things with design of their tents and uh, yeah, pe people people like them. Um, I like I like being able to ask questions and talk to companies and have a good relationship with them. And it makes it a lot harder for me to pass on information to you guys if if it's hard to work with a company. And um, that's that's kind of why like I was mentioning earlier in the podcast like. I'd love to move away from Gaia because they're just a tough company to work with. And when I'm giving advice to people about navigation apps, I want to be able to recommend something that um, is going to have good support and good communication, good development. And uh, yeah, Gaia, Gaia doesn't have that for me right now. And uh, Tarp Tent's kind of a similar, similar situation for me. Jason, what are your thoughts on hiking umbrella versus rain jack jacket and bag cover? I like the I like umbrellas for the right scenarios, and I like rain jackets for the right scenarios. If it's gonna be raining consistently, I'll wear a rain jacket, and if it's gonna be raining off and on in kind of light rain without much wind, then I'll bring an umbrella. They're they're both good options and have their have their places. Well, a lot of questions. Awesome, thanks guys. Uh, Tristan, what do you think about the Spot X messengers with keyboard? I will never use a Spot again unless there's major changes that come about due to. Apple being on the Global Star Network now. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was an environmental scientist, ecologist before, where I was in the field a lot, doing a lot of field work. I was, I was using basically the same gear, same kind of rain jackets, pants, um, in reaches, spots, and the spots were the least reliable by far. Um, multiple companies that I worked with moved away from spots completely, and almost no one in the industry where safety is very important. Safety is very important because you're. It, you're relying on these devices every single day to keep you safe and communicate back home. Um, everyone moved away from spots because they just weren't weren't as reliable as in reaches. So, um, if so, if, if that's that's why I'm gonna test the Motorola Defy out really well because I think reliability is the most important thing with these devices, and I won't trust a spot um, again until I hear that there's been major changes to the to the network. Do uh, do. Higgler, sorry if this has been discussed. Is there a lightweight rain jacket that actually works? There's a lot. There's a lot of rain jackets that will keep the water off you, but you probably will sweat in them. So it's, <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's anything that uh, um, people have really like come up with in the rain jacket category. That's that's solid yet. Victor, can you recommend a solid brand of electrolyte strength mix, or do you have one that works really well for you that you could recommend? So I think I like electrolytes are an interesting one as well for recommendations because everyone has different electrolyte needs. Um, if you can, if you can get tested for your electrolyte, like secretion amounts, um, and how much you need, then that's a great way to figure out what sort of electrolyte packets you get. Cause you, you can get electrolyte packets all the way from like a hundred milligrams of sodium to 300 milligrams of sodium, 500 milligrams of sodium, a thousand milligrams of sodium, 2000 milligrams of sodium and everyone's going to have different needs. And it doesn't seem like there's not really a company yet that's making like, and I've, I've told some companies have come to me like, Hey, can we sponsor some videos for electrolyte stuff? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm kind of like off, off of that now. Cause it's such a, 
the more I've researched it, the more I've realized it's so individual to everyone. So until if a company came out and they're like, Hey, we have like electrolyte 300 electrolyte, 600 electrolyte, 900 electrolyte, electrolyte 1200, and those different options for different packs, then I'd, I'd work with them in a second because then they have something for everyone. And um, then I can recommend them and know that it's going to work for people depending on what their needs are, as opposed to like, like element is a thousand milligrams per packet. And for some people that's not going to be enough. And then for other people, that's going to be way too much salt or sodium, and they're not going to need that. So sorry, that's, a, that's my, that's my electrolyte rant. Um, so find out how much works for you and maybe you just need to do trial and error where you're out like running sweating and you use like some, like start off small and then increase the amount of sodium you can also make your own electrolyte stuff as well like lime juice and and salt so <laughs> yeah that's that's my that's my electrolyte rant <laughs> aaron nemo tensor versus big agnes boundary deluxe sleeping pads uh ten, tensor just because of the warmth uh the boundary deluxe isn't isn't super warm um relative to the tensor uh, that guy, do you like ponchos on trail or only rain jackets? I like rain jackets. Um, yeah, ponchos are okay. I just don't like them, like how flappy they are. <laughs> Jay, are you coming to Japan? Lots of good hikes here. Uh, maybe at some point, um, I'd love to go to Japan. I'd love to travel to a lot of different places. It's just so, so, so many places, so little time. And, uh, Steffi, Steffi Poo wants to make little outdoors at some point. So, so do I. So it was, at some point there's gonna be little outdoors running around and uh, that makes it even tougher to, to, to get around. All right, let's uh, jump to some questions. Dusty, are you following the Women's World Cup? I am not, I am, I am sorry. Yeah, I, I've, I've used, I see a lot of element, like I've used element before and like a thousand milligrams is kind of around what, what I need, like 1200 milligrams is kind of the ideal amount um, of sodium replenishment that I should be putting into like a liter of water. Um, so element comes very, very close to that for when I'm doing like heavy, heavy sweat exercises. But I know that like for, for other people that I know, like that's going to be way too much and they need more like like 500, 600 milligrams of sodium. So yeah, do, do some, do some research into electrolytes because yeah, not there's, it's definitely not a one fit, one size fits all option. And there's so many different companies out there doing a lot of marketing because the margins are great. There's taking salt, mixing it with some flavoring and then putting it in a package. So there's a lot of marketing dollars behind electrolytes right now. It's kind of like supplements, um, where there's a lot of a lot of money going to marketing because the overhead the overhead's so low and the margins are so big. Brett, ever try cold soaking while so if you're if you just just to put it out there, I really appreciate all the questions coming in. If if you are asking a question, do what some of the other people are doing where you put question in all caps and then colon and then ask your question, then it'll be it'll be easier for me to pick it out of the out of the stuff. Um Brett, uh, ever try cold soaking while bad pa backpacking? I have, and it did not go well. I was a gassy mess. My farts were really stinky. The problem was I cold soaked like a meal that I dehydrated myself. I, I cold soaked chili and it just didn't rehydrate fully and I wasn't able to digest it very well. I, I might try it again with like couscous, like something that's a little bit easier to, to digest because yeah, it, it did not go well last, last time and I have a little bit of... Um, a little bit of trauma, a little bit of trauma from that. <laughs> All right. Dusty Old Hat, if you want to save money, just make your own electrolyte mix and you don't have to be having having the element packages. <laughs> um, that guy, could you do a video about the most effective way to hike with a partner? I've always wondered about the like dupl double sleeping pads or sleeping bag liners, stuff like that. Um, I think it's... I, it's interesting hiking with a partner. Like I assume you mean like a partner that you're like sharing a tent with and maybe a sleeping pad and things like that. In in that case, I think uh, you just need to communicate, figure out what's going to work best for two, for both of you. Because for some people having a double sleeping pad that's connected is going to be great for other people. Like if there's a big weight discrepancy and someone's an active sleeper, like if Steph and I were on a um, double sleeping pad that shared the same air chamber, then if I tossed, I'd just launch her off the, off the sleeping pad through the tent wall um, because I weigh so much more than her. 
So there, there are some sleeping pads like X bed makes somewhere it's connected, but each chamber there's two different chambers. So each person can kind of tweak the firmness as well as the air is isolated a little bit is isolated um, in the pad. So definitely, definitely check out the different options out there. I think, I think just making sure everyone's comfortable is the best, best way for when you're sleeping. Um, yeah. Chris, can you share your go-to breakfast that you often mention? I gather it's a no cook recipe, but I don't think you've said, so I use, instant oats from like just Quaker instant oats that I buy from Costco. I do four like protein powder scoops of that into a Rusby bag. And then I just take some dark chocolate chips, put those in and then some dried mixed fruit, like berry fruit and put that in. And because it's instant oatmeal, I can just pour some water in, let it sit for like a couple minutes and then it's good to go. Um, I, you could also add hot water as well, but I, I personally don't like, uh, taking the time to boil water in the morning. I don't drink coffee in the morning. So I just like that cold option for, for, for oatmeal. <laughs> uh, Dusty, have you ever made skirka beans while on trail? I have, it was pretty good. Yeah. I would I'd import the dehydrated refried beans <laughs> because we don't have those in Canada, but it was, it was good. It was a, it was a, it was a tasty thing. Um, Chase, I'm off to Banff and Jasper next week. Any hikes in the area that are a must? Uh, Borjo trail in Banff is phenomenal. Um, if you can get up, I'm not, I don't think it's open anymore. You, if you're, if you're a fast hiker, you could try and do, you could do skyline in a day. If you want to like trail run it or fast pack it, um, and getting up as far as you can towards, uh, Berg Lake is phenomenal as well. Uh, any other Banff, what are some other Banff hikes? Like Lake Minnewanka, just like kind of wandering around the lake is pretty sweet. Um, you can get into Kananaskis into some good some good spots. Uh, I definitely went right off Kananaskis, like like up up to like Elbow Lake, and then past that, there's some good good views and getting good areas around there. Questions, questions. Oh, one got removed. <laughs> Yeah. So get, yeah, getting your questions. Um, Jay, how do you plan the amount of calories intake relative to distance and intensity? So I, I've kind of just based it off. Like I track my calorie burn, uh, on hikes and I've kind of, I kind of know how much I burn. And then the other aspect is just how much I can eat. Like I, I lost 25 pounds on the great divide trail because I just couldn't eat enough calories. Like I knew I could put in about like 4,000, I could eat about 4,000 calories a day comfortably, 5,000 maybe, but I was burning like 8,000 calories a day. So at some point it's just eating as much as you can <laughs> when, when you're out on trail, because you're going to be burning an, enough calories at it, and you're just not going to be able to eat enough. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, I, which, which is, which is fine. Some people are, are able to eat more better as well. Like, and it kind of just depends on your circumstances, your gut, um, different things like that. I, I, yeah. So I, I think just track a lot of it's tracking. Like my, my fitness pal is a great app for tracking how much calories are in different foods. So I like to use that in order to figure out how many calories are in the foods that I'm eating. And then I use my Garmin watch to track how many calories I'm, I'm burning. And then I can kind of get a good sense of, of the both. Dusty, I've never been to Nelson, BC. That's I, I have not, but okay. We're, we're an hour and 15 minutes in. If you guys have any more questions, drop, drop them in. I'm going to, I'm going to run through some, um, some shout outs for things that I have in the video description. So definitely go check out, uh, pack, like some things we've talked about on the podcast so far. Um, we've talked about Guy GPS is the navigation I've used. I have a, a link to Guy GPS in the in the video description, as well as packwizardwizard.com if you're interested in like a gear gear list app with like a checklist feature, and then you can you can check things off as you pack, and you can browse other people's packs. And then if you go to my profile, which is packwizard.com forward slash user forward slash Justin Outdoors, then you can see a lot of the packs that I've made. Um, like my fast packing pack and things like that, check out all the different gear that I'm using there. And if you need to, if you, if you, if you find a pack inspirational, you can just duplicate it, copy it to my packs and then duplicate it for yourself and then start tweaking it. 
Um, so great, great little app. What else we got going on? Um, groundhog tent stakes. Someone asked about groundhog hog tent stakes. So I threw, threw those in there and then the gear priority podcast, go subscribe to the gear priority podcast so that, um, it can hit a thousand subscribers. So I can start. So YouTube doesn't scrape all of hundred percent of the ad ad revenue. Like we can share it and put it towards getting uh, better equipment for the podcast. Um, so that's just search gear priority podcast with Justin outdoors. Uh, Joshua, can you recommend an affordable watch to track those stats? I, I like the Garmin Instinct the best. Like you could get you can get Instinct like an older Instinct, which is very very solid still. I think for like around a hundred hundred bucks these days, two hundred bucks, um, you can get a two for for not much more. If and if that's if you don't like get if you don't need mapping or like music then the instinct is going to be solid. If, if you like, if you want mapping and music, then the Phoenix line or the Enduro line or the Epic line are going to be, are, are going to be good. Uh, Zesma, what do you think of Salt Lake city? Yeah. Great, great mountains. It's pretty crazy how close the mountains are to Salt Lake city. They're, they're pretty lucky there and they're amazing mountains. There's a lot of public land, a lot of random camping areas. Yeah. Salt Lake city is pretty, pretty solid. They, uh, um, I, I ran it. I met up with Devin with backcountry exposure when I was there and, uh, he lives in Salt Lake city. Um, yeah, pretty jealous that he gets to live there, but he could probably say the same thing. Like, like Calgary is awesome. The Canadian Rockies are awesome. So really, uh, um, really happy about that. Uh, Pat, Pat, Patna Turner, Patina Turner suggestions on a quick and effective way to carry bear spray. I just carry them in the side pocket of my pack and I just always make sure that any pack that I use, I have to have side pockets that I can reach. Otherwise, it's just a no-go for me um, from a safety standpoint for bear spray as well as I hate not being able to reach my water bottle pockets. <laughs> um, Tristan, I did replace my bear spray at the next uh, resupply location when I was charged because I did spray the bear and then I replaced the bear spray afterwards. Uh, I like I like using an Ursac, Jason, not a bear can or hanging. <laughs> Uh, gate, Gatewood Cape for UL hikers. I think the Gatewood Cape is a great option if it's big enough for you. So I, I get questions a lot about like gate, Gatewood Cape ver and the Serenity Net, I think it's called, versus the Lunar Solo. The Lunar Solo just has a lot more space. You save a little bit of weight with the Gatewood Cape, I think, and the Net option. But um, the Lunar Solo is just a lot roomier. So if, if the Gatewood Cape fits you, then I think it's a good option. I also like, I really, I've been playing around with the Z packs hexamid a lot. And I love just like having a little tarp over top of me for how much weight it is. It's like the size of like a, a beer can. Um, and that with the Uber light is just a pretty insane little, little combo, um, for a sleeping pad and tent tent, I guess it's, uh, yeah, I, I've been, I've been really trying to push my limits with ultralight a little bit recently and, uh, having, having some fun with it. <laughs> but really appreciate everyone popping by, uh, join the live stream. Uh, we'll have to have another one, another one soon. Um, Joshua, thank you. Thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Put that towards, uh, some, some podcast, some podcast, uh, some podcast equipment. Um, okay. One more question. One more question. What knot do you use to secure your sack to a tree? Figure eight. That's what's recommended, Ryan. That's what I do. Last I checked, that's what was recommended. So yeah, thanks again, everyone. Thanks for all the channel members who are popping by. We had a lot of cha channel members today. Um, and yeah, just generally really appreciate everyone popping by the podcast and, and, and listening. We'll talk to everyone later.